This conference uh, will now be recorded. For the participants. Krishn thank Burani, you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Ek bar, ek bar se aapko organizing secretary, organizing team, principal, madam, sabko bahut bahut badai is uh, program ko organize karne ke liye. Or I think uh, participants are really uh, benefited by the knowledge and uh, the experience shared by the various resource persons. So uh, in continuation to my previous uh, lecture, yesterday we discussed correlation analysis. Today I am going to discuss about uh, the exploratory factor analysis. Okay, so uh, my screen is visible. Yes, sir, it's visible. Is this visible? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, this exploratory factor analysis, you know, before I begin, uh, let me just give a brief background to the factor analysis that what actually the factor analysis is and why do we use this factor analysis so that the students and the participants they can um, understand the context of today's uh, session all right you know the factor analysis you know uh, uh, we generally measure various uh, things you know qualitative phenomena or qualitative aspects using certain variables now these variables uh, can be measured on uh, likert scale or maybe on different other type of scales generally in social sciences we use a five point likert scale or maybe sometimes seven point likert scale so we measure certain variables using these scales and there is a lot number of uh, uh, variable list which is actually unmanageable to interpret so when we have to manage these variables all together to bring down um, these variables into limited number of you know um, specific groups then we use factor analysis so factor analysis is basically a data reduction technique we generally say data reduction technique means we uh, group the variables which are of similar nature or meaning thereby which have high degree of correlation among them into a particular uh, set of variable which is known as a factor so uh, we use this factor analysis um, to group the variables for reducing the data in manageable form and also for uh, i will discuss the various other uses of uh, factor analysis also um, in, the, in the coming slides you know those factor analysis once you know it has two forms one is exploratory factor analysis and then second is confirmatory factor analysis so this session i will not be talking about the confirmatory factor analysis i will be focusing only on exploratory factor analysis now exploratory when we talk about exploratory factor analysis we simply uh, let the data give us what uh, whatever is the structure in the data set so we may have number of variables you know one two three or maybe ten variables or um, uh, in social science generally these variables are referred as items on uh, likert scale so we may have number of items maybe 10 items 12 items sometimes 20 items and i have seen the questionnaires also comprising of 80 items now taking into account these 80 items are not manageable you know we cannot infer a uh, something which is really interesting to report or interpret the results so we need to uh, reduce these 80 variables into some manageable groups so these manageable groups are actually called as factors okay so factor is a linear combination of variables as i said it's a group of linear combination of uh, variables so it is also known as a construct you know we generally call it as construct all right or it is also called as latent variable all right so the latent variable or construct can be presented in this way you see 
these are the different variables variable 1 variable 2 variable 3 these three variables may be grouped together based upon the pattern of correlation among these into one factor so this is one factor you know factor 1 is f1 is factor 1 and then other variables variable 4 and variable 5 can be clubbed together into factor 2 this is another factor 2 uh, this is called as latent variable or construct so in social sciences in qualitative phenomena you know it is very difficult to measure uh, certain qualitative aspects for example satisfaction how do we measure the satisfaction so another example like uh, beauty how do we measure the beauty like this cannot be measured directly these are qualitative aspects which cannot be measured directly uh, from a particular variables there is no specific variable these are all subjective terms you know so in order to infer about these type of constructs we have certain uh, we develop certain items certain questions certain variables so all these variables they actually try to capture a particular latent variable or construct which is which is uh, called as factor factor 1 factor 2 like that so this can be satisfaction so latent variable so using these three variables or number of other variables we are actually trying to refer about the satisfaction or about the beauty about pain and all such type of you know um, uh, constructs so factor analysis is actually a technique of reducing the number of variables different number of variables uh, to a meaningful constructs all right so you can say that now earlier there were five variables now we have managed these five variables to club and to group into two factors now this is manageable earlier there were five variables or 80 variables now they have been reduced into two constructs you know and we will be using these two constructs f1 and f2 for our further analysis so this is what factor analysis is and these factors may be uh, uh maybe statistically correlated with each other it depends upon like which type of uh, approach you are using for exploring the factors okay so efa i will be discussing about the various approaches of uh, exploring the factors so if your approach is uh, principal component analysis these variables these constructs you know these factors will be statistically independent okay otherwise if your approach is like these factors should be correlated with each other then uh, these factors may be correlated with each other so for that we use common factor analysis approach i'll discuss that later so factor analysis actually believes that take what data gives you and do not set any priori constraint uh, on the number of factors to be extracted you know uh, this is a statistical technique there are a number of methods uh, which you can apply to extract the number of factors out of 80 variables or 70 variables or 10 variables um, number of methods are available but what is supposed to be uh, done through exploratory factor analysis is accept whatever data gives you so data will give you uh, the number of factors after extraction you accept that these are the factors and then later on you can give a meaningful name to these constructs or latent variable based upon the number of items clubbed in that particular factor all right so uh, there are certain key terms which are used in uh, the exploratory factor analysis i will explain these key terms however you may not be very much uh, comfortable with these key terms at this point of time but when i perform this uh, factor analysis using spss I will again explain these terms. So first term is anti-image correlation matrix. You remember this term only, this anti-image correlation matrix, all right? Non, uh, anti-image correlation matrix is basically, it's a matrix of partial correlations among variables after factor analysis. Yesterday we talked about the partial concept of partial correlations. So you remember that partial correlation is the correlation between two variables or two items here we can say it between two items for uh, after controlling the effect of any third item or any other items so this anti image correlation matrix gives you uh, the partial correlations uh, among the variables and the diagonal values they contain the measure of sampling adequacy here 
measure of sampling adequacy which is important point to note down uh, and it's a precondition also for performing this uh, factor analysis so diagonal values uh, they give a measure of sampling adequacy for each variable all right and off diagonal values are partial correlations so in the matrix you know in the matrix of rows and columns you will see the diagonal values as the measure of sampling adequacy and the other values as the partial correlations among variables next is bartlett test of sphericity this is also another important term which will be used in uh, exploratory factor analysis this is a statistical test basically for testing the overall significance of correlations in correlation matrix yesterday we uh, prepared one uh, correlation matrix using carl fusion's coefficient of correlation matrix so this bartlett test of sphericity checks whether there is a significant correlation among all the variables or among all the items under study so if this value if this bartlett test of sphericity value the p value is significant then we assume that there is a significant correlation among the variables or the items in the correlation matrix okay and this is also one of the precondition for performing the factor analysis or efa next is communality communality is actually the total amount of variance that an original variable shares with all the variables you know you can understand this communality as the total variance which an original variable uh, shares with all other variables meaning thereby ki how much uh, variance is actually shared by the variable with all other variables you know so depending upon the various approaches of uh, factor analysis efa principal component analysis or common factor analysis we uh, we focus on whether total variance or maybe common variance i will also come to that little later then there is a factor loading factor loading is an important term to understand here because factor loading will be used so frequently in the efa so factor loading is nothing but it's a simple correlation between the original variable and the factor so correlation again we are talking about the correlation so yesterday i i shared with you all that correlation is very important concept which is the basis for uh, many of the analysis in the in uh, research you know so factor loading is simply the correlation between particular original variable and the factor so if you look at the diagram below uh, back so what is the factor loading now this will be the factor loading how much factor this particular factor 1 is sharing uh, is accounting for variable 1 right okay? isn't it so this is the factor loading will be the relay correlation between factor 1 and fact variable 1 to so iska second uh, then uh, factor 1 to variable 2 and factor 1 to factor uh, variable 3 like that there will be the factor loadings okay next is eigen value eigen value is basically the squared the all the sum of the squared loadings for a factor so always remember the communality communality is again communality is also the squared uh, value of the correlation and we take the sum of these values for the variables for particular variable and eigen value is also sum of squared loadings for a factor communality is always for variable eigen value is always for factor so eigen value is the sum of the squared loading for a particular factor it shows the amount of variance accounted for by a factor particular factor so higher is the variance the better is the factor so jitna maximum uh, factor particular factor explain kar sakta hai utna zyada acha hai okay then there is a factor rotation so factor rotation is the process of adjusting the factor axis to achieve the simple and meaningful factors all right so simple you know we use these factor rotations to give a clear and uh, meaningful factor structure clearly humko pata lag gaya hai ki bhai ye hamare factors nikal ke aa rahe hain so we use these factor rotation methods so there are two types of uh, factor rotation methods one is orthogonal factor rotation where the axis are maintained at 90 degree it means you if you want the your factors to be extracted in such a way that after extraction factor should not be correlated with each other then you should use orthogonal factor rotation and 
uh, after factor extraction these factors will not be correlated at all i will show and i will show you that whether uh, these factors are correlated or not after performing this orthogonal factor rotation methods so some of the important uh, methods orthogonal methods of rotation are very max equimax and quartimax they are already uh, supported in the spss then there is a oblique factor rotation if you want uh, your factors to be correlated with each other this is opposite to the orthogonal factor rotation so if you want your factors to be correlated with each other after extraction then you can use oblique factor rotation and uh, some methods are like oblimin promax and orthoblique all right so you can see uh, these are also supported in spss i will use uh, i will select some of these methods you know to perform the efa lastly there is a factor score factor score is after extraction of uh, the particular factors from the data set now the standardized scores are generated uh, statistical scores are generated and these these are the standardized scores with mean 0 and standard deviation 1 all right so these factor scores can be used for further analysis now instead of taking the scores of all the variables now we can use the factor scores so we will have the values for the extracted factors in terms of factor scores and these factor scores can be used for further analysis be it in regression analysis i was listening to the previous resource person he was mentioning like uh, that uh, factor analysis can be used for regression analysis you know so uh, these factor scores are used for uh, used in multiple regression analysis to avoid the multi collinearity i hope uh, the resource previous resource person on who explained uh, the regression analysis or multiple regression analysis must have talked about the multi collinearity so if your independent variables show the multi collinearity problem then we can use efa to remove this multi collinearity problem i will show you that also how to do that so i hope uh, these are important terms uh, which you must understand at least there are many other terms also so i will be explaining those terms uh, when the context comes uh, okay now as i said that we have certain approaches of factor analysis exploratory factor analysis uh, first approach is principal component analysis or also known as component analysis this is actually a uh, very common approach and uh, mostly uh, the researchers use principal component analysis only okay they 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 treat it principal uh, they treat this principal component analysis as a synonymous for factor analysis also but that's not true this is one of the approach of exploratory factor analysis so under principal component analysis we consider total variance that uh, factors derive you know and contain small proportion of unique variance and in some instances error variance so it is most appropriate when data reduction is primary concern when you have when you want to reduce the data so out, so those 80 variables or 100 uh, items can be reduced using this principal component analysis so this is one approach okay and when uh, specific and error variance represent a relatively small proportion of the total variance so your your focus is on uh, extracting or uh, maximizing the total variance explained by all the vari variables then you should use the principal component analysis the second approach as i said is the common factor analysis in which you basically focus on the common variance or the shared variance so shared common variance means we we only try to uh, maximize the common variance shared by the variables among themselves and whether these variables they make uh, a particular factor or not so when this approach when we have the common variance as our objective to extract the factors we use common factor analysis and it is appropriate when the primary objective is to identify the latent dimensions or constructs when we want to uh, find out whether uh, what are the dimensions uh, we, you may have 80 uh, items 50 items 
but those 50 items what are the latent constructs among those 50 items so if you want to explore this you should use this common factor analysis you know most of the time your researchers they go for the principal component analysis without knowing uh, that what are the dimensions uh, in those items you know uh, 80 or 50 items so when you want to explore key what are um, what are the dimensions or hidden dimensions latent dimensions or constructs which can be generated from these 50 variables then you should use common factor analysis and also when the researcher has little no knowledge about amount of specific or error variance therefore he wishes to eliminate this variance he can go for uh, this common factor analysis so uh, principally uh, what i would like to um, uh, summarize this is you should use principal component analysis when you want uh, your uh, your focus is that the variables should be should uh, share maximum variance among themselves and they should give one factor then you should use principal component analysis but when your uh, approach is when you want that there is a some latent construct or there is some latent uh, variable right latent dimensions among those 50 variables then you should use common factor analysis okay so this is the diagrammatic representation you can see this is the factor model in component analysis uh, we focus mainly on the total variance okay and in common factor analysis we generally focus on common variance so the variables may have uh, uh, common variance among themselves so if focus if we want to extract the factors in such a way that the factor should share a com maximum common variance then we use the common factor analysis otherwise we can go for the principal component analysis when our objective is to find out more variance which is shared by the variables among the other so we, we focus more on total variance here okay so although both component and uh, com common factor analysis they yield similar similar results in common research setting maybe 30 or more variables or communalities of 0.6 or more okay for most of the variables component analysis is uh, used is used uh, when the data reduction is for uh, your primary concern and when common when you have certain theoretical application well specified theoretical application and you know that there is a some hidden dimension or latent construct in these items then you can go for common factor analysis or common factor approach of efa all right now coming to the preconditions of efa uh, you know there are certain conditions which must be satisfied before performing factor analysis or efa exploratory factor analysis so first condition is the variables you know the items should be measured on metric scale or interval or ratio scale in spss the scale variable scale uh, scale measure okay so if your variables are on uh, ordinal scale or uh, nominal scale i think this efa will not be a suitable technique so first condition is your variables should be measured on metric scale or interval or ratio scale okay second condition is there should be at least five variables for each proposed factor suppose if you have in your mind that there are uh, five factors to be extracted out of uh, 50 items so if you are expecting five factors so at least there should be uh, 25 variables you know at least 25 variables for each proposed factor so this is one condition there should be uh, you should have minimum five variables for each proposed factor so one is to five is the ratio means one fact for one factor you should have at least five variables or five items then there should be adequate sample size together all together adequate sample size means the number of observations so this uh, adequacy of sample size is actually measured using kmo and this kmo value should be more than 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay then we can assume that uh, the sample size is adequate enough to perform efa then uh, next important precondition is that there should be significant correlations among all the items or among all variables 
and this is checked using Bartlett test of sphericity as I already discussed uh, in the terms. So Bartlett test of sphericity is used to check whether there are significant correlations among variables or not. So if p value for the Bartlett test of sphericity is less than 0 0.05, we assume that there is a significant correlation among the variables. I'll show that. Okay. Now significance of factor loading. Uh, as you remember that factor loading, what are the factor loadings? These are the correlations between variable and factors. So factor loadings in the range of generally plus minus 0 0.32 plus minus 4 are considered to meet minimum level of interpretation of the structure. So if your factor loadings are minimum plus minus 0 0.3, then you can interpret them. But they are not. these are not actually very good. But the factor loadings plus minus uh, 0 0.5 or more, they are considered to be practically significant. And however, the factor loadings above point plus minus 0 0.7, they are considered as indicative of well-defined structure and the goal of EFA. So, you know, this, these factor loadings also, they vary upon uh, the sample size. You can see here, if your sample size is 350, you can consider the factor loading of 0.3 plus minus 0.3 or more as uh, significant. But if your factor, if your sample size is 250, you can you should check for 0.35. If your sample size is, uh, say for example, 100, you should go for this your factor loading. You should check the factor loadings or the correlations between variable and factors above 0.55. Okay. Similarly, if your sample size is 50, then you should go for the factor loading of more than plus minus 0 0.7 or 0.75. So in total, if you see, even if your sample size is small, you should check the factor loadings above 0 0.7 plus minus 0 0.7 or otherwise above plus minus 0 0.5 is fine. Okay. So we will see the factor loadings above plus minus 0 0.5 only. Okay. We will ignore these 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 because yeah, if your sample size is uh, generally it is uh, considered if your sample size is more you can even go for uh, smaller factor loadings okay so it is not necessary uh, sometimes you may have small sample size sometimes you may be a large sample size so if you have large sample size you can go accordingly as per this option but uh, normally we uh, as a thumb rule what we consider is we consider the factor loading significant which are above plus minus 0 0.5 okay so you keep in mind we will consider only the factor loadings which are above 0 0.5 plus minus 0 0.5 okay now the next question is that how many factors should i extract uh, does it as i said that in the first slide one approach is accept what data gives you so accept how many factors, whatever number of factors are extracted by the system or the SPSS or the statistical procedure, you can accept those many factors. OK, but there are other approaches also. First approach, which is used by uh, the system or the statistical procedure is you can accept the number of factors, significant number of factors which have eigenvalues more than one. So the factors which can be more than one, I, whose eigenvalue is more than one, we will accept them as a significant factor. This is first approach. Second approach is that you can have a certain priority approach. Priority approach means you have certain something in your mind that out of these 50 items or 30 items, there should be minimum five factors. So if you want to extract only five factors, you can extract only five factors. So this is what is called as a priority approach means you have in your mind that there will be five factors out of these 30 variables. You can uh, make a priority approach and you can extract only five factors. Then, uh, you know, generally we are concerned about uh, the variance, you know, total variance percentage of total variance explained. So generally, uh, if you want 80% of the variance to be explained by the factors, you can consider those factors which all together are explaining 80% of the variance. Otherwise, you can also uh, extract the factors or you can also take the factors which explain um, more than 60% of the variance. 
so generally this is uh, important it is not necessary that you know in together if all the variables are considered for factor analysis they will explain 100 percent of the variance because they are 30 variables 30 if you are making 30 variables and 30 factors you are making so there is no sense at all because your purpose is not solved your purpose was to reduce the data so the 30 variables should be reduced in some manageable factors so those manageable factors can can be uh, in such a way that they should explain 60 percent or higher variance okay so those factors which explain 60 percent or more variance you can take them as uh, significant number of factors another approach is like based upon the scree plot a scree plot is a diagrammatic representation for uh, number of factors to be chosen you know so uh, factors before the inflection point inflection point is uh, the banting point you know bent point in the scree plot and uh, before this bent you can uh, whatever is the number of factors uh, you can uh, take them as uh, the significant number of factors okay and lastly more factors you can assume more factors when there is a heterogeneity in your sample subgroups so you can go for more number of factors if there is a heterogeneous sample uh, that would be best approach to uh, to find out the factors okay as i said the two orthogonal and oblique factor rotation methods you see this is the 90 degree when where uh, this is orthogonal factor rotation method where you can see the angle between the factors is always 90 degree and these are the factors factor one and factor two and if you rotate in this way that the, rem the angle between these factors always remains a 90 degree it means they will always remain uncorrelated then uh, this rotation you can just twist it and uh, the clear factor structure will appear if you twist it the certain variables will be excluded and certain variable will be included based upon this uh, orthogonal factor rotation and this is the oblique factor rotation which is wherein you assume to be uh, the, you assume the factors to be correlated with each other so the angle between the factors will be less than 90 degree okay it will be less than 90 degree as you can see this angle will be less than 90 degree and uh, assuming this you can rotate the factors to give a meaningful and clear structure okay so this is oblique factor rotation now validation of efa structure now we can definitely explore this uh, factor uh, factor structure using spss but it needs to be validated whether the factors which you have extracted are valid uh, constructs or not for measuring a particular phenomena okay so we use a confirmatory approach as i said in the beginning factor analysis involves two uh, broad you know um, approaches one is uh, uh, exploratory factor analysis the second is confirmatory factor analysis so confirmatory factor analysis is used to confirm the factor structure to measure a particular construct or particular phenomena and uh, this is different from the efa exploratory factor analysis so efa simply gives you this is the factor structure okay then later on you have to confirm that factor structure using a confirmatory factor analysis approach so uh, confirmatory factor analysis is not today's uh, focus of uh, this lecture i will not go into detail so this confirmatory uh, factor analysis is used to assess the replicability of results whether the constructs which you identified through efa they are measuring the same thing repeatedly or not so we can assure we can be assured of uh, this particular aspect using confirmatory factor analysis and can be done with a split sample in the original data or with a separate sample so confirmatory factor analysis uh, is repeated on a separate set of uh, sample or maybe you can you split the sample of your efa file or efa data file and you can run the confirmatory factor analysis the results may be uh, validated and you know this uh, confirmatory factor analysis is done through structural equation modeling you know which is uh, advanced technique of uh, uh, running parallel regression so many regressions okay number of regressions in regression analysis simple or multiple regression analysis we generally run only one equation with one dependent variable and uh, number of independent variables but uh, in structural equation modeling you can run parallelly 
a number of regressions okay so this is a little bit complex and it needs additional software such as amos lizrel or eqs and systat also uh, systat also has given this confirmatory factor analysis approach in the latest version all right so where can we use this uh, efa the results the efa results factor structure as i said that factors can be used uh, the extracted factors they can be used as a uh, surrogate variable for subsequent analysis instead of using all 80 or 50 uh, items for uh, your further analysis now you can use the scores of the meaningful factors for further analysis be it in uh, regression or be it in uh, other kind of you know um, you can say the t test anova or something other some other kind of tests so uh, it can be used as a surrogate variable for subsequent analysis it can be used for creating uh, summated skills as well and uh, for computing the factor scores and principal component analysis pca is especially can be used to remove multicollinearity as i said you know i will show you that how this multicollinearity in the regression analysis can be removed using principal component analysis so this is the conceptual understanding about uh, the factor analysis now uh, we will perform the factor analysis using spss so i hope this is clear shall i go ahead with the factor analysis on spss okay Uh, my screen is visible sir yes sir yes sir okay 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 so uh can you see this data file this is the data file okay i have taken one data file wherein uh, there are the variables from x1 to x10 okay x1 to x10 there are 10 variables and these variables are measured on Likert scale, all right? Likert scale uh, from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And the variables are, what are the variables? You just see here, I have, I want to capture the perception of the people about the cold drinks. So the example is, my first variable is cold drinks are refreshing. And I ask them to give uh, the responses uh, from strongly disagree to strongly disagree. Agree. Okay, so these are the variable labels one to five. One is being categorized as strongly disagree, five as strongly agree. Okay. Similarly, second variable is cold drinks are bad for health. Again, the same scale is used. Cold drinks are very convenient to serve. Cold drinks should be avoided with age. Cold drinks are very tasty. Cold drinks are not good for children. Cold drinks should be consumed occasionally, and cold drinks should be should not be taken in large quantity. And also cold drinks are not as good as energy drinks cold drinks are better than fruit juice if you see if you notice that these questions or these items you know there are 10 items uh, you can say it is not very much clear that what you want to uh, find out with the with that perception okay so i want to know that what is the hidden structure in this you know the latent structure in this and uh, i would like to perform the whether uh, just give me those factors which are not correlated after the fa after factor analysis okay so my objective is that uh, i want independent factors you know statistically independent factors after performing the factor analysis so how can we do that using this spss and this is the data file you know it contains uh, num uh, number of respondents uh, 100 respondents okay so 100 respondents they have given their opinion on these 10 items and i will perform this factor analysis now so to perform the factor analysis go to analyze and uh, go to dimension reduction why dimension reduction because as i already said let's say factor analysis is a data reduction technique so go to dimension reduction and click on factor okay so when you click on the factor you transfer all the variables or all the items which needs to be reduced into meaningful uh, factors so these 10 variables i am transferring to this variable box all right now click on descriptives 
and make sure that at least initial solution and KMO and Barclays test of specificity is checked and NT image is also checked. So these three, you should remember all these three initial solution, KMO and NT image should be checked as the minimum uh, you know, condition. So there are other options also. You can click on these, but I will not be uh, interpreting these. About, I am not interested about all these. So I am interested about the factor analysis. So that's why um, I, am, I have clicked on initial solution, KMO and Bartlett test of stressity and in the image. If you remember, we discussed about KMO. KMO gives you the measure of sampling adequacy and Bartlett test of stressity gives you the significant correlations among all the variables. All right. So click continue. Then click on extraction. So by default, if you see the method is cho method chosen is principal component, but it is not only the method of factor analysis. There are number of methods of factor analysis approaches. Principal component is one of them. There is unweighted least square, generalized least square, maximum likelihood, principal access factoring. So these two methods, you know, maximum likelihood and principal access factoring, they are used when you want your factors to be correlated with each other so maximum likelihood and principal access factoring are used when uh, for uh, common factor analysis but pca principal component analysis is used when you want your factors to be uncorrelated after extraction so as of now i want my factors to be uncorrelated with each other okay so i will select this principal component analysis which is by default selected and also click on scree plot you know since i discussed about scree plot however it is not required it is graphical method of uh, selecting the number of choosing the number of significant factors okay so let us click on scree plot also at this point then next extract based upon eigenvalues if you remember we discussed five methods of extracting the number of factors how many factors should i extract so i discussed five factor, five ways of uh, selecting uh, you know the number of factors so system here it extract it there are two approaches which can be used for extracting the number of factors based upon the eigenvalue as the first approach i i, I chose uh, so if the eigenvalues for the factors are greater than 1 they all the factors will be selected okay for those uh, where uh, the eigenvalue is more than 1 but if you have a priori approach means if you have certain uh, fixed set of number of uh, fixed number of factors in your mind you can specify the number of factors to be extracted say for example i can give five factors if i assume that there can be five factors out of these 10 variables i will give five factors but let uh, um, as i said that the basic assumption of efa is that accept what data gives you based upon eigenvalues or any other uh, method so i am not setting a priori approach I will select uh, the or I will choose the factors based upon the eigenvalues. So click on this based on eigenvalues and eigenvalues greater than one. Now maximum iteration for convergence by default it is 25. You know this is a uh, factor analysis. EFA is a iterative process. You know it tries to give you maximum the best results. So if in one iteration uh, it is not possible, then it will go for the next iteration. So um, minimum 25 in 25 iterations, it should converge. You know, the result should converge. The result should come out. But if it is not possible, you can give a higher value. So I will give a higher value of 250. It means now the system SPSS will run, run 250 iterations. So 250 iterations in any of the iteration, the results will be best. Okay. So it is always better to give a higher number for this uh, iterations. Okay. So I have given 20 by default is 25. So I have increased 10 times making it 250. Okay, click continue. Then click on rotation. As I told you that there are two types of uh, methods, rotation methods, orthogonal and oblique. So orthogonal method I want when is used when you want your uh, factors to be uncorrelated. So I will select this very max method, which is a type of orthogonal method orthogonal rotation method and uh, just display me rotated solution again maximum iterations for convergence you can increase this value to 50 to 50 click ok ok uh, you can use direct oblique uh, method when you are you want your uh, uh, factors to be correlated but as of now i chose principal component analysis 
so hence i want my factors to be uncorrelated so that's why i chose uh, very mixed method okay scores i am not saving these scores right now all right uh, later on if you click on this it asks you to save as variable you know scores will be saved for further analysis so as of now i will not save the scores later on i will do it and then click on option and make sure that it is this uh, these two options are checked sorted by size and suppress small coefficients uh, small coefficients it is saying that less than 1 it will suppress so but i want that suppress the small coefficient less than 0.4 okay because i am not interested about uh, the factor loadings which are less than 0.5 so even i can go with the less than 0.5 you know so these values will be there in the system but they will not be shown in the factor analysis table final table so absolute values less than 0.5 i have uh, instructed the system not to show me rather they will be there in the system okay click okay and then finally we have checked all the options now click okay and this is how the factor analysis is run you can see here a number of tables will be there and some uh, one uh, as output uh, gra graphical output dis uh, display output will also be there so it is running the factor analysis taking some time yes finally the results are here okay now let us read and interpret these results so first table gives you the initial solution and checks for the three conditions of performing the efa exploratory factor analysis as you see this is kmo value kmo we discussed kmo value kmo value is measure of sampling adequacy so as a thumb rule our kmo value should be more than 0.5 so first condition is satisfied this value is 0.72 it means it is more than 0.5 so we can say that our sample is adequate enough to perform efa so first precondition is satisfied second precondition is that there should be sufficient correlation among variables and that is checked using bartlett test of sphericity so this bartlett test of sphericity the approximate chi square value is 224 and it is significant this if this value is less than 0.05 we assume that there is a significant correlation among all the variables so both the conditions are satisfied sampling adequacy overall sample is adequate and there exist uh, a simply there exist a correlation significant correlation among all the variables now look for this nt image correlation now nt image correlation if you remember don't look for this nt image covariance this is talking about the covariance and this is talking about the correlation so we will look at uh, the nt image correlation and check all the diagonal values these diagonal values in this table they should be more than 0.5 if they are your sample for that particular variable also is adequate enough so these are the you know these uh, diagonal values these are the measures of sampling adequacy for a specific variable that particular variables okay and the other values the, these are the partial correlations we discussed about that other values these you know off diagonal values these are the partial correlations so you need to check in this nt image correlation if any of the value is less than 0.5 it, that will that variable will create a problem okay so here uh, as i can see there is no value on the diagonal which is uh, less than 0.5 so there is no problem at all now these are the commonalities so initial commonalities if you see initial commonalities will be 100% because you are taking 10 variables and you are assuming that there will be 10 factors so all the variables they will be uh, explaining 100% uh, variance okay but that's not the purpose of factor analysis factor analysis assumes that there should be less number of factors uh, less number of factors than the number of variables okay so after extraction these are the commonalities you look for uh, these commonalities after extraction if there is any commonality which is less than 0.5 that will create a problem so can you see that let's let us examine you just see this is the variable x8 which is explaining only 364% of the variance after extraction okay 
rest all other items are explaining more than 50 percent of the variance okay so this is one uh, indication that x at variable is not actually uh, fitting into the factory structure it will it may create a problem so we will let us see for the time being you remember that x at is the a problematic variable it may be a problematic variable okay now this is what the total variance explained is so how many factors are extracted actually uh, we gave a command we gave an instruction to the spaces that give me the factors significant factors whose eigenvalue is more than one so you can see the eigenvalues these are the initial eigenvalues okay the eigenvalue for factor first is 2.935 second is 1.842 third is 1.0 and fourth is 0.92 which is less than uh, 0.1 which is less than one so that's why this is not taken as a significant factor okay so uh, there are three factors actually three significant factors or ye, uh, and these factors they are explaining total variance how much 57.97 percent so 57 percent variance is explained by all these three factors for of all 10 variables meaning thereby there can be three constructs out of these 10 variables okay and this is the cumulative frequency cumulative variance explained by after rotation this is before rotation and this is after rotation okay there will not be any change the uh, before rotation also the total variance explained will be will be same as after rotation but the in between values will be modified because it will equally distribute uh, after rotation method it will almost you know manageable manageable uh, uh, manageable form of the variance will be uh, shown here in uh, this after rotation method of squared loadings okay so total is not affected only what is uh, the the method gives you the equitable distribution of the variance okay this is the scree plot okay as i said Scriplet also gives you uh, the idea that how many factors to be retained. So where is the point of inflection? The bent actually. You can see these are. This is the bent. This is the bent. So first factor, second factor, and third factor. You know? After that, so these three factors you can take as significant factors, and this is the bent. So Scriplet also gives you an idea that how many factors will be significant. So from this Scriplet also you can. Uh, have one idea now let us go to the component matrix component matrix is nothing but it's a uh, you know unrotated uh, factor loading matrix so how this variable there will be three factors we have already seen from this structure that there are three significant factors out of 10 variables up now uh, now these uh, three factors how they are uh, related with each other you know so that will be shown in this matrix you know component matrix so it's a factor loading matrix so x6 so factor loading is that correlation correlation between first factor and x6 is 0 0.861 okay as you can see factor loading and x4 is 0 0.76 uh, x2 is 0 0.74 and like that fine and then second variable the second factor these are the variables which can be clubbed x8 is not taken into account you know there is no variable as we we had already assumed that this may be a problematic variable so you unrotated in this unrotated uh, factor structure there is no uh, uh, this value is not shown third variable the third factor third factor it shows x1 and x9 also now this is a problem of cross loading you can see x1 variable is correlated with second factor also and it is also correlated with third factor in unrotated uh, component matrix okay so for that sake you know we use this the factory structure is not very much clear actually because x1 variable is showing the cross loading so we use this rotation method and now look at this rotated component matrix so rotated component matrix shows you a very good and clear factory structure you see what is that clear factory structure in first factor there are x6 you know let me show these variables kon kon se variables hain ye ek bar dekh lete hain so ye variables hain uh, okay now these are the variables you see in first factor cold drinks are not good for children cold drinks should be avoided with age cold drinks should be bad for health 
कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर बैड फॉर हेल्थ एंड कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स शुड बी कंज्यूम ओके तो ये एक फैक्टर बना दिया है इसका इन सारे वेरिएबल्स का एक फैक्टर बना दिया फिर उसके बाद सेकंड फैक्टर जो बनाया है कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर वेरी टेस्टी कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर रिफ्रेशिंग कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर कन्वीनियंट टू सर्व इन तीनों का एक एक्स वन एक्स फाइव और एक्स थ्री इन तीनों का एक फैक्टर बना दिया एंड थर्ड फैक्टर इज दैट कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर बेटर देन फ्रूट जूस एंड कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर नॉट गुड नॉट एज गुड एज एनर्जी ड्रिंक्स नाउ यू सी देर इज ए नेगेटिव फैक्टर लोडिंग हियर सो ये नेगेटिव फैक्टर लोडिंग क्यों आ रही है Why? Because these cold drinks are better than fruit juice. क्या आपको लगता है मतलब do you think that earlier question was cold drinks are not as good as energy drinks? So this question should have been reworded or it should be the response pattern should have been negatively recorded. So uh, that is why you know this is a negative question, negative wording question, right? So this needs to be changed, and then the structure would be. Uh, positive 0.64. So how can I change this also? I can show you how to change this. X10. This is the variable X10. Okay. We need to uh, change the variable, record the variable in reverse direction. Reverse coding has to be done. Okay. So let us do the reverse coding for the data set and then rerun. And you can see this variable X8, which was creating a problem. The very value is not shown. You know, 0.5 says ka kam hai. So the value is not shown because we gave instruction not to show us the value factor loading values which are less than 0.5. Okay, so all these values are above 0.5, but X8 is not fitting into the data. So uh, automatically the system has removed, and we instructed the system not to show the value factor loading values uh, less than 0.5. Okay, so this is a clear factor structure as you can see. कि पहले factor में कौन से कौन कौन से variables आ रहे हैं, दूसरे में कौन से आ रहे हैं, तीसरे में कौन से आ रहे हैं. But एक ही problem है इसके साथ में. This one, okay, this should be reverse coded. You know, this variable should have been reverse coded. So I can do it uh, using reverse coding. So yeah, this is X10 variable, you know. So I will reverse code it, transform, and uh, recode into different variable. And not recode, okay. Like, recode के भी से भी कर सकते हैं. एक shortcut है compute variable. Compute variable में this is X10. I am taking X10 new variable. I am giving a new variable name, okay. New and uh, x10. Uh, now deduct all the values from six. So six minus uh, x10. Okay, six minus x10, and then click OK. So what will happen? One will be converted into five. Two will be converted into four. Three will be remain three, and uh, four will be converted into two. And so that's where that's how uh, the reverse coding will take place. Click OK, and now the variable has been transformed. And now let us rerun the factor analysis. Okay, including x10 new variable. Okay, now this is uh, cancel. I need to specify the variable as a scale variable. So this is scale variable now, and rerun the factor analysis. Transfer, remove this old x10 variables and include x10 new. And all the conditions have been satisfied already. I have extraction method, principal component, eigen values, 250. All this rotation method is also very max, and number of iterations selected. Option is sorted by size, and suppress small coefficients less than 0.5. Okay, so uh, you can remove the X8 variable also because X8 was not causing any impact. So you can remove this X8 variable. Now let us rerun again. And see the what is the new factor structure. You can see again the KMO values more than 0.7, Martlet test of specificity significant, significant correlation. All well, diagonal values should be less uh, more than 0.5, perfectly fine. The values x1, x2, x3, okay. Uh, the values are however there are more than point uh, less than 0.5 x10 now. It is explaining only how many values is may come over here. Commonalities, but now it is giving two factors only. Okay, so if we include x8 again, x8 को भी वापस रखते हैं अगर हम इसको करें, so then you see uh, the structure would be more clear. Okay, now this is the structure. Again, it is however it will not show. There are three factors: scree plot, the same, unrotated component matrix, and now look at this. Uh, well, uh, this factor structure. You can see first factor. 
ये वेरिएबल्स दीज वेरिएबल्स एंड लेट एस सी वॉट आर दीज वेरिएबल्स बोथ एंड द क्लियर स्ट्रक्चर अर्लियर दिस वैल्यू वॉज नेगेटिव पॉइंट सिक्स फोर नाउ आफ्टर रिवर्स कोडिंग द वैल्यू इज पॉइंट पॉजिटिव पॉइंट सिक्स फोर सो फर्स्ट फैक्टर इज शोइंग दीज आर की कोल्ड ड्रिंक्स आर नॉट गुड फॉर चाइल्ड चिल्ड्रेन avoided with with age it is bad for health should be consumed occasionally so what you can see you can give a meaningful name to first factor and that meaningful name ye kya lag raha hai aapko ki matlab this uh, set of variables they are actually trying to measure that these people are health conscious see so health con Juice. Okay, now it it is cold drinks are not better than fruit juice because we have reverse coded the variables. Uh, this variable we have reverse coded this variable. So cold drink is not uh, good. Uh, it is not better than fruit juice. So this is a clear structure. Now you can see three factors: health conscious, taste and refreshment, and uh, no comparison. You know, not an uh, no comparison with the fruit juice or energy drinks. so these three uh, now these scores can be used for further analysis you remember that uh, my first uh, assumption was that i wanted to have the structure factor structures which should not have any correlation among these factors okay so now i can save the scores so click on scores and save as variables using uh, regression or you can say anderson rubin is the best method you can select anderson rubin uh, method for uh, saving the variable the, now the factor scores will be saved in the data file so click okay and then you will see here in the data file there are three new variables have been added earlier these were not there factor 1 factor 2 and factor 3 and the scores standardized the scores are saved now i want to check whether these scores are correlated or not because my assumption was that i wanted the factors which should not be correlated at all so how can i check the correlation yeah, you remember yesterday we discussed the correlation correlate and bivariate so now transfer these factors which factor scores to check the carl pearson coefficient of correlation okay factor 1 2 3 and click okay now you see the correlation between factor 1 and factor 2 0 factor 1 and factor 3 0 all so means we have the factors which are not correlated with each other now this same type of concept you know multicolority regression mein kya hota hai to so, multicolority hai that is also the same concept ki uh, multicolority says that independent variables are highly correlated with each other so if they are highly correlated with each other so then it is not uh, important or it is it will not add any significant variation or change in the r square आर स्क्वायर चेंज नहीं होगा ज्यादा ज्यादा से तो नहीं होगा तो हाउ टू रिमूव द मल्टीपोलिटी यू कैन मेक द इंडिपेंडेंट फैक्टर्स फॉर दो इंडिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल्स एंड यूज फॉर रेग्रेशन एनालिसिस सो अवर पर्पज इज सॉल्व दैट वी वॉन्टेड इंडिपेंडेंट फैक्टर्स विच शुड नॉट हैव एनी को रिलेशन अमंग दम सेल्फ सिमिलरली यू कैन यूज कॉमन फैक्टर एनालिसिस कॉमन फैक्टर एनालिसिस में क्या है कि मींस यू अज्यूम दैट देयर इज देयर विल बी अ कोरिलेशन अमंग द वेरिएबल्स सो फैक्टर एनालिसिस में जाकर के ही वहां पे क्या करना है यू हैव टू सेलेक्ट ओनली इंस्टेड ऑफ प्रिंसिपल कंपोनेंट एनालिसिस यू सेलेक्ट दिस इदर मैक्सिमम लाइकलीहुड और प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस फैक्टरिंग एंड देन रोटेशन मेथड यू हैव टू चूज एज प्रोमैक्स मेथड और डायरेक्ट ऑब्लिमेंट ऑब्लिमेंट मेथड direct oblimin method you can select direct oblimin method for uh, or oblique rotation you know oblique rotation and continue remaining all things will remain same and you can click and uh, find out 
the common factors so hope uh, this would be useful for you i know that i was little fast today <laughs> because uh, i had to show this uh, this exploratory factor analysis how it is done so that's all from my side if you have any questions please let me know thank you sir for very uh, informative lecture participants <laughs> please if you have any query post it in chat box Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Hiran yes. asked one question: Is there mm. a relationship in result of Pearson correlation and exploratory factor analysis? Uh, come again. What is the question? Is there a relationship between hmm. result of Pearson correlation and exploratory uh, factor analysis? See, Pearson correlation uh, simply gives you the correlation between two variables, all right? And uh, if you want to know the correlation between the factors or the constructs, yesterday I discussed that you should use canonical correlation. Okay, so Carl Pearson coefficient is used uh, as a measure of correlation between two variables, two uh, quantitative variables or scale variables. But uh, yes, of course, exploratory factor analysis is based upon the assumption that the variables or the icons which you are considering for factor extraction should be highly significantly correlated. Sir, one question from Facebook. Yes. That is it is it possible to do factor analysis of moderating variable and independent variable separately? Uh, see, moderating variable is different. Moderating uh, moderating variable fact uh, parallelly you can't do that. You know, ex the purpose of uh, factor analysis is simply give you uh, the latent structure of the constructs. Uh, out of your uh, total number of items you know and then moderating variable is something which actually influences uh, the effect of certain uh, you know particular independent variable on dependent variable under particular assumptions okay so uh, we it is not actually also advised to go for uh, uh, you know parallel uh, exploratory factor analysis for moderating variable as well as uh, your latent structure or latent variables constructs so you you should do uh, separately you know it is it would be better otherwise what will happen your moderating variable may um, come into uh, you know come, it will it will fit into the items also you know for in particular factor so it is not advised that you should go for moderating uh, the factor analysis for moderating variable as well as uh, the your items you know the liquid skill items you do it separately it is always better okay sir, sir one, one question. also question from okay okay ask puno uh, when performing factor analysis on dichotomous data is it sufficient to use spss alone uh, dichotomous data factor analysis should not be performed first of all First of all, I, because dichotomous data is ordinal scale variable, okay, and the first precondition is for performing the factor analysis is that uh, your variable should be measured on metric scale. Metric scale means either the either it should be interval scale or ratio scale variable. So dichotomous variable will be ordinal scale variable. Oh, sorry, nominal scale variable. So uh, you cannot perform even if you perform results would not be good. So you should avoid performing uh, factor analysis on dichotomous variable. Thank you, sir. Sir, question from Deepak: Necessary to do all statistical approach to use in each research? Is it necessary? Is it necessary <laughs> to do all statistical approach to use in each research? <laughs> Actually, this is very subjective. It is not necessary. 
in my opinion it is not perfectly it is not necessary to uh, use stat I means statistical all the statistical techniques for your research purpose it it depends upon uh, what type of research you are using okay and uh, what type of technique you want to use for your um, uh, research purpose so it totally depends uh, you should uh, like what kind of uh, approach you are using whether you are using uh, advanced approach you are using a normal approach regression approach all these are the statistical methods it totally depends like which statistical approach you are using and also one more important thing is it is uh, completely not necessary that to use statistical methods also in the research there are some researches where you can go purely on qualitative basis and uh, conduct the uh, conduct your research and interpret the results but for that also you have to be very careful the literature review uh, should be very you know uh, very strong enough to justify your uh, findings so it is completely not necessary to use all sort of statistical analysis it always depends upon your objectives uh, so your if your objectives are objectives require your know, hypothesis requires a particular test statistical test to be used then you should go for uh, that particular statistical tool or analysis so i have uh, uh, you know uh, for the scholars uh, i would like to uh, just share with you all uh, because i have made this short or uh, small videos also uh, on various aspects of research methodology uh, and i have shared these videos on uh, my youtube channel you can watch uh, they are very small and crisp you know videos different two way anova one way anova when to use uh, and uh, se selecting appropriate test of hypothesis che checking normality assumption the measurement scales in the research also so all these videos are very crisp and short i think they will be uh, helpful uh, in understanding the use of statistics and uh, the concepts you know to run using spss so i, I mean they can watch these videos if they want otherwise it's okay up to them uh, i hope that this, this will be yes one more question uh, what is difference yes. between principal component and maximum likelihood yes there is a difference you know both are opposite principal component analysis is used when you have uh, the assumption or you want the factors extracted factors to be uncorrelated with each other then we use principal component analysis and also when your objective is to reduce the number of uh, variables into manageable factors you know when the data reduction is the purpose and when you want the factors to be uh, you know to be uncorrelated with each other then you should go for principal component analysis otherwise uh, the maximum likelihood or principal access factoring this approach is used when you assume that uh, the factors extracted will have certain correlation with each other means they will be related with each other this uh, means you can understand that uh, uh, the factors will have certain correlation i just now i showed uh, after performing the principal component analysis that factors were extracted factors were not correlated with each other because the correlation coefficient between these factors was zero so that was based upon the principal component analysis but if you use uh, maximum likelihood or principal axis factoring then the correlation coefficient between the extracted factors will be there some value will be there so that is the basic difference you know so that is first up actually if the principal axis factoring or maximum likelihood approach should be used as a uh, beginning approach for extracting the factors dca can be used later on if you find that there is a poor correlation among the variables you can go for uh, pca principal component analysis no more questions sir okay thank you ma'am uh kanti ma'am hey Huh. And now I would, okay ma'am okay uh, now i would like to dr kranti singh ma'am for formal vote of thanks kranti ma'am 
Thank you, Raghavin, sir. Uh, thank you, Murari, sir. It's my great pleasure to thank you, sir. Really, we are very grateful. Have a nice lecture and clear lecture. There is no confusion and no queries about the topic, sir. Uh, we, on behalf of my organizing team and my principal, Dr. Anuradha Tiwari, a very big thank you to you, sir, and hope you will accept our request in future 